Good morning, everyone. It's Chris from Solstice ATR as well as Axel. You can find me on the website, Twitter, Instagram, Discord. Remember, we use this adaptive algorithm for the side market, up market, and down market with snow bias. This is for educational use. We're not a broker dealer. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the smash button. Share it with your friend. Let them know how we can help you in order to improve your trading. Let's go to the first slide. In this first slide, I did one in January and did one in February of 2023, beginning of the year. I reformatted it and added some stuff, removed some stuff out of it. I have some futures, stocks, and equities. I'm not going to go through all of them. I will go over couple so that way you know how to use it. There are some that work together, some work in divergence to what the market is giving you if it's uptrending or downtrending. The fear gauge, I made it a little bit larger and I put the VIX, the VIX, which is the ETF slash VX is the commodity and the futures. The TBT is the uh, ETF for the interest rates and you have the ETFs here, you have the stocks here and you have the futures and the commodities and some currencies there as well as the dollar, the Aussie dollar, Japanese and so on. Remember, take a snapshot. Look at the charts to know what to buy, what not to buy. You don't want to chase on the rally up and you don't want to buy on the highs. You want to buy at the lows, do the measured moves. Let's go to the next slide. Remember, if you have questions, once again, get in contest with us. Give us your commentary on the video. Let us know how we can help you. Let's go to the first slide on Tick and Swim platform, which is becoming Schwab. And you can see the label has changed from green to basically blue on the top and it says Schwab on it. This is the three year charts that I did last week on the S&P 500. I showed that the downtrend from the top to down here where we hit the lows and we closed, we had a 10.63 decline in the market. And this week I was putting the 200 SMA here to the top had 17%. So what I'm gonna do is activate it from here. We're gonna activate it, move this to the, oops, activate the chart. It didn't want to when I grabbed it. Okay, we put it down here and we can see in order to go back to the top, it's going to take it about 12.18%. But if I move this level here and I look at the total yield when it ran up, we did a 6.58%. But at the close, we closed a little bit lower. We got a 6.2% at the close, which is around the 50 uh, uh, Fibonacci at the same time where the close was on the SPX at 4 p.m. So this is a very important yield if we're going to keep it that way. But if I activate it and leave it alone at the top, so we know we have about 12.6 to retrace in the charts when we go back higher. So this is very important that the S&P prior years high to low in October, we had the December low, we had the January and March due to the Silicon Valley and the bailout. The consolidation in May, and we had the June rally, July, then we had the dump from the prior month, which was in 731. We never looked, we tried to look back up. We fell back down. Now we're trying to rally. We have the 18 SMA right in front of us, but we had cleared the 50 SMA in yellow in the 116 simple moving average. This is a very strong engulfing candle on the weekly due to the Federal Reserve announcement. Let's take a look at the SPY, and I want to do the SPY, the reason behind it. It's a more cleaner chart. You can see that this downtrend, we're trying to remove this. We can do a downtrend here. Once we clear this downtrend, you have to pay attention to the charts. If we break above it or not, this is one. This is two, which we are trying to retest, or you can have that one here. We can duplicate one down here. Or back side of here, we are in a linear regression downtrend, but at the same time climbing up. Or we have one from here all the way to here. That's an uptrend on the charts in a symmetrical triangle. Pay attention if we create a shoulder here to break up, or we fall back into that linear regression downtrend. And the SPY, we're going to look at the QQQ. I'm doing it a little differently because I use always the commodity. You can see it on the weekly that the NASDAQ was a little bit more stronger, or the QQQ, which is the ETF. This was a Gap down. This was the January uh, 3rd of 2022 high, the October 10th low. We had the December low. Then we had the January duplicate 
rally up March, rally quite a bit strong, but the NASDAQ stayed a little bit more stronger or the QQQ or the XLK. We rallied higher. We cleared the 18 SMA and F5, which is the 50 Fibonacci. So this is the reason why I'm showing you two ETFs. Let's take a look at the dollar DXY. And I'm going to put the dollar up for one reason and one reason only. I put it on a weekly to show you the prior year low to high. When we came back down this year, and we tried to, you know, fall lower. We rallied out of that linear regression downtrend, broke up, tested the 61.8 Fibonacci, couldn't make it. We tried last week to as well, a couple of times, test that 61, that 107, let's call it 107.10 in order to clear, in order to run. We fell back in the range. We are just right above the 50 Fibonacci on the daily chart. Pay attention to the dollar. And we're going to look at the VIX, which is the ETF for the fear and greed gauge in the v oops, VIX. I'm sorry, the VIX. And you can see that after every spike, we have, you can see in lower highs in the prior year, every time we had a spike, this was the only spike that it rallied, tested the 200 SMA on the weekly. And this week, there was a very sharp drop to back to that. $14 range. Have pay have to pay attention to that $16 area, $16.50 if it, the VIX comes back above it and the $17.85. So these two numbers are very important. Or do we consolidate back to the downside and the VIX? Let's go take a look at now the micro NQ. And I want to do the measured move and I want to keep this video very simple. And quick to everyone, remember, you can use that on equities, on stocks, ETFs. It doesn't matter what you're trading. Remember to use a 5 SMA, an 18, a 50, a 116, and a 200 SMA, and so on. So let's go to the measured move instead of using the weekly or the daily to show you where we are on the daily after that push up. We were in a downtrend, linear regression downtrend. These are hand drawn. This was a consolidation on the left that I had the oval. You can see it right here. Let's just zoom from here. So you can see that consolidation. This was a nice breakout. We consolidated, retested this small gap once, twice, three times, came back, fell below. And this week we had a nice rally back up to the backside of the downtrend channel. But we closed above F6, which is a 61.8 fib having cleared the upside of that major downtrend channel, this would be about the 78, 80%. Do we continue up here in order to fill 100% of that gap? Or do we create a right shoulder, come back into that linear regression? If I duplicate this channel, let's say I just go duplicate drawing, and I just grab it, even if I don't draw it, and I put it down here, you can see where that linear regression 50% is and the 38% or the 20%. You can see the ranges where we are in that downtrend channel. I put this up just to show you how it looks like. We can remove this one so you can know how to use linear regression, downtrends, and uptrend, and momentum trading where the RSI was in a downtrend, and eventually we broke up on the daily chart. We're above the 50, and the RSI sitting at 57. Let's go now to the four-hour chart, and I want to do the measured move. Intraday, we're going to go to 10, uh, 10 days, and we're going to use a two-hour chart for everyone push OK. We can see that Friday's low was here and Thursday, Thursday and Friday, I'm sorry. This was the Sunday low in the Nat mic, uh, micro NQ. I'm not using the regular NQ because it's got a lot of data on it. And you guys are going to basically tell me what is that stuff on the charts. I'm going to keep it simple. So you can see it because it's written by out. You can take the high from here to this low here on Sunday. This is the low for the week. I did not use the bottom here for one reason. I usually use the weekly from Sunday to Friday on measured move. Fibonacci's I use them for better levels. But these measured moves I use them for one thing to calculate gains and losses. So that way when you are entering a trade, you know where the 20% is, the 10%, the 50% and so on, the 30%. 80%, 100% and extensions to the upside, extensions to the downside. I'm going to open this and show you how I've added these edit the properties. You can see I added the extension from below zero, minus 25, 50, 80, 100. So the 20, you can make it minus two zero. You can see where the 23 and the 30% is. The 25, you can do the same thing here. You can make it into 20. The 75, you can make it into an 80.8. 
as well the 125 you can make it into 120 and so on so when you edit it it'll move up the the measured moves or the Fibonacci you can see the or the measurements from 20 instead of the 25 you can see where the 23 and the 38 percent you can make you know where the 30 percent is and so on vice versa to the top and bottom of these extension and the reason why every time we get to the minus 80 100 or the one uh, the 180 to 200 usually these are reversal tops and bottom we got two extended here the ADX hit 60 that's a DMI momentum directional momentum indicator with the RSI and the DMI and the ADX hit above 80. We are expecting a little relief before continuation. It does not have to, but if it does, you know, you can have an uptrend channel here. You can draw an uptrend channel in this fan and you know where the support and resistance are between this channel and this channel. You can see where the levels are on the chart so you can use those things or you can put a little oval or a marker where the retracements can be in order to help you out we're going to do the same thing in the micro or we'll do the spy for everyone spy we'll do the etf this time for everyone i am not going to use the uh, you can see where the sunday's low is and the monday low you can see where the thursday friday low is and this is the Monday low to high. So I'm going to get a measured move or you can use a Fibonacci. We can do the same thing here going up or down. We can see how I drew it so everyone can see it. You can see that the support and resistance where they are. Usually I don't draw draw except this way for one reason. So if I draw down, it's the market I'm expecting it to go down. But if I draw from bottom to top, the numbers are going to give me where my 38% Fibonacci F3 is F5 and F6. You can see it that the machine did it for me and the 23%. I don't have the marking of the 23 or the 78 on the chart. And I do have the extensions to the upside and downside where my 23, 38, 61, and so on, and vice versa going down. These are the reasons why I use Fibonacci's or measured moves in order to help me to stay in a trade or out of a trade. And you can see that the machine did a linear regression uptrend channel to the upside at the same time we are in a wedge getting a little exhausted at the top do we fall back in retrace a portion of the move before continuing higher this is very important that you do understand this couple of earning reporting coming next week so pay attention to the reports and there's as well disney i don't pay attention to disney you can look at some equities and go on from there. If you have questions, please get in contact with us. Let us know how we can help you by reaching out to Solstice, giving us a call. Let us know what your commentary is, what you like about it, what you don't. Share it with your friend. Take care.